Hello fellow artists, Mr. Hendrick here. Um, today's uh, drawing activity will focus on multiple different types of drawing to add depth. Um, I'll be going through it step by step, but just to give you a, a, a basic intro, um, we'll be looking at five different types. So your basic blending type, which I've started in a different video. In um, this video, I'll be talking briefly about hatching one, direct, one directional lines to create depth, um, cross hatching when you make multiple directional lines to create depth, stippling, which is sort of drawing nothing but dots and small marks um, and making them more condensed in areas that are darker, and finally scumbling which is one of my favorites when you just kind of scribble around and you layer your different mark makings in order to create depth. So let's get started with this. I'll be using the sphere for this example, but you can pretty much use anything. There it is. Okay, in this video I will review um, or go over five different ways. Let me try that over again. In this video, I'm going to go over five ways to add depth to a three-dimensional object. Um, so in the last video, I went over the basic uh, shading technique um, for a sphere. Um, today, we're going to actually use that same sphere, and I'm going to show you four additional ways. First, a quick review. So when shading using a pencil, things you want to think about, you want to think about your light source, where it's coming from, where the highlight's going to be, where the uh, half tone or the grayest area is going to be, um, where your core shadow will be, right? So just as a quick review, as you see here, just changing the pressure of my pencil to go lighter towards the top right and darker towards the bottom. So I'll use my blending stick, but again, you can use your finger or a tissue um, just to kind of mix it all together. All right. Go over it again, etc., and so forth. And again, we also in the last video went over the idea of a cast shadow, or the shadow coming off the object. It's going to be darkest where it meets the object. It's going to get lighter towards the outside. And you want to go over it a couple of times to really sort of blend it together. Okay, so that's the review for shading. Um, the other ones I wanna go over today is something called hatching, cross hatching, stippling, and scumbling. Okay, so let's start with hatching. Now, for all of these, you can do it in a pencil, but if you wanna try it in pen, you can use pen. You can use, pretty much use, use any medium for these other ones. But hatching, simply put, is just directional lines that will create a sense of depth. So essentially, it's like a repetition of small lines, right? So using the same ideas that we had last time, where our highlight is, where our cast shadow is, um, where our core shadow is, we're going to be adding lines. Now, the trick is you don't want to have flat lines since this is a rounded form. So I'm going to slightly curve my lines around the bottom. Now, it's only just a one directional line, so you're not going to, you can go over it again, changing the darkness. 
but you don't want to change directions. Same thing with the cast shadow. So if I kind of outline where the cast shadow is going to be, I'm going to have darker hatch marks or directional marks fading outward. Okay, now you can always use your eraser if you need to kind of bring back your highlights or bring back your reflected light a little bit. Just a smaller eraser. Come back over it again. There you have it. Directional lines that create a sense of depth. Now, cross hatching, as you the name implies, starts off with the regular hatching, but then you get to cross over it in a different direction or multiple different directions. Okay, so in fact, I will show you how to do this using a pen, just to kind of change it up a little bit. Um, so, I'm gonna start the same way as, as I did before, my regular hatch marks. Right, but I'm going to change directions now. So maybe I'll, still curving my lines. Going to curve it this way, maybe I'll curve it on an angle between the two, and so on and so forth. Notice how I'm leaving the one area lightest where the highlight should be. Again, if you're working in pen, there's no erasing, so you have to plan ahead for those sorts of things. So again, I'm just changing my directional lines to create the sense of depth. I'm also spreading out my lines as well. So I have a lot of closer lines at the bottom left, and I'm going over it in multiple directions multiple times. Um, and in the top right, I'm using less lines, more spread out lines um, and shorter lines. Now, for the shadow, Okay, the shadow come out this way. Same idea applies. So I'm going to start with some lines going this way. Now I'm gonna change directions. And I'll change directions one more time. And there you have it, cross hatching. The fourth one I wanna go over today um, is stippling. Stippling is the idea of using a lot of dots and more concentrated dots in darker areas. So using the same idea as before, same highlight, same shadow, we're gonna use small dots. Now this one will take a little bit of time, so I may definitely time lapse this section here. But notice how I'm gonna put a higher concentration of dots in the lower left, and a lot less dots um, in, in the top right.
All right, well, there is an example of stippling. Oops, I kind of smudged it, but I should have let it dry it for a second or two. Um, but I'm going to use my eraser to get rid of some of the pencil lines. Write the word. Oops. Pay no attention to the smudge there. Um, but as you can see, stippling gives a, a pretty interesting texture, an interesting effect. Um, you have a lot of control over where you place dots, so, but it is a little bit time consuming, but still pretty cool. Now the last one, scumbling, is something that people do a lot of times in paint in, paintings or an underpainting with a kind of created texture by just doing um, small circles or small marks with a dry brush in all different directions. It works really well in drawing too, um, just by making marks and kind of scumbling around or moving around the, the area and just adding more lines and more marks to certain areas that you want to appear darker. So for this, if I just start anywhere, I'm going to start here. I'm going to start with that same crescent moon shape. Notice I'm kind of making small little circles and zigzags and keeping it really loose uh, and gestural. I'm just kind of filling up my sphere this way. Again, notice how I'm kind of circling where the highlight's gonna be. Um, so I'm trying not to add too many marks in there, uh, especially working in pen, because you know you really can't darken it that much. So, doing the loops, I'm kind of just bringing it around town, and I'm slowly darkening it by just adding more lines, more, almost scribbles and small circles, and different marks around the page here. Don't want to lose my outline, so I'll go over that real quick. Same thing with the cast shadow. So I'll have a lot of stumbling closer to the sphere and I'll just lessen it the further away from that object it gets. And look at it, if it looks like it needs more marks in one area, go back over it. So there you have it, five different ways to apply a sense of depth to objects. Um, whether you're just doing classic shading with a pencil or one directional marks hatching, uh, multiple directional mark cross hatching, small dots that you build up to uh, create depth and stippling, or small marks and, and, and circular motions in, in a sense of scumbling. Um, these are really useful tips. I suggest that you try all of them out and see which one sticks, or even a combination. Uh, a lot of times I will start with shading, but then I'll maybe go over it with some cross hatching and kind of experiment with that. Um, try it out and I cannot wait to see what you guys come up with.